I'm going to tell you about the bloody gospel. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. So, taking a look at this bloody gospel, number one, in verse three, you see Christ died for our sins. So we know Jesus Christ died, and looking at other verses, we can see how Jesus Christ died for our sins. And we see that he died by shedding his blood. In Psalms 22, 16, it says, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. And that's a prophecy concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. On the cross, Jesus Christ received bloody wounds in his hands and in his feet and in his side. If you read John 19, 34, it says, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. So he had wounds that shed blood. And even the events leading up to his death on the cross were a bloody mess. Isaiah 50 and verse 6 says, I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And that's referring to when they would take the whips and stripe him. And those are prophecies about the Lord Jesus Christ and the bloody mess that it would be when he died. And then John 19, 1 through 3 says, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they smote him with their hands. So he was beaten and whipped, had his beard plucked out, and they put a crown of thorns on his head. He shed massive amounts of blood before he even went to the cross. It's a bloody gospel. Jesus Christ died for our sins. He died by shedding his blood. Isaiah 52, 14 says, As many were astonied at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So, when he went through the events leading up to being hung on the cross, these things made him so unrecognizable. He was beaten to a pulp, beaten so bl badly and so bloody that when he was on the cross, you couldn't even recognize him. It was a bloody death. Jesus Christ died shedding his blood for all of our sins. And you need him to be your savior because you're a sinner. And he died for every single one of your sins. You just have to accept the payment. Number two, I want to really look at the point that Jesus Christ died not only by shedding his blood but also died for our sins. As I said, you are a sinner and you can't preach the gospel without mentioning sin and this means most TV preachers and radio preachers never really do preach the gospel because if a man doesn't mention sin then he's lying or he's a fake or he's a deceiver who may be even deceived himself. Isaiah one eighteen says, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So the Bible says our, that our sins are the same color as blood. Men are bloody. Uh, this is why they have hands that shed innocent blood. Men watch to love other people suffer and have their blood shed. Many people's darkest fantasies involve blood and our sins. 
are the color of blood, as Isaiah one eighteen says. But if you put your faith in the blood, you can have your sins become white as snow. So Jesus Christ died. He died by shedding his blood. He died for our sins. And Jesus Christ died for our sins and was buried. And Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross. His blood went to the ground. Genesis 4.10 says, And he said, What hast thou done? Thy bro the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And that's what God said to Abel after he killed Cain way back in Genesis. God said, Your brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. There's something about blood that you can't get rid of it. If you've read about any crime scene investigation or anything like that, you'll know that people try their hardest to get rid of the blood after that they've killed somebody. I'm sure the devil would like to get rid of the blood of Jesus, but he can't get rid of it. And the blood crieth unto me from the ground, it says in Genesis 4.10. Jesus Christ not only shed blood that went to the ground, he was also buried in the ground. Hebrews 12, 24 says, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. So, Jesus Christ, his blood's better than Abel's blood because it's God's blood running through the veins of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights and the voice of his blood may have been crying something from the ground, maybe saying it's finished. It's paid for. And next, the next part of the gospel is that Jesus Christ rose again. And when Jesus Christ rose again, he took his blood up there with him. He took the blood straight through the sea of glass, maybe even stained it red and made it the Red Sea. And we'll pass through it at the rapture, just like the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea. And then after, he went straight through the universe into the third heaven, and he entered into the holy place with his blood after the resurrection. And we read this in Hebrews. Look at Hebrews 9 and verse 12. It says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So, Jesus Christ shed his blood, took it with him to the third heaven at the resurrection. And then verse 24 of Hebrews 9 says, For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, not to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world he hath appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So as you can see, every part of the gospel is linked to blood in some form. It's a bloody gospel. And you should never attempt to preach the gospel without mentioning sin, without mentioning the death, the burial, the resurrection, and without mentioning the blood. John MacArthur would have you believe that the blood isn't important, that it's just the death. But it's the blood that's important. Even the part of the gospel written in 1 Corinthians 15, which says, According to the Scriptures, According to the Scriptures, you can't get saved without the blood of Jesus. And the Old Testament prophesied of the blood of, of atonement of the Son of God. He prophesied about the blood of atonement. John 5.39 says, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. So the Bible is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's actually more about his second coming of vengeance than it is about his first coming and his death. And here soon the Lord is going to rapture the saints. The tribulation is then going to begin sometime thereafter. And then the Lord is coming back down with the saints to unleash wrath and defeat the armies of the Antichrist. And he's going to bring in the kingdom. He's going to take it by force. And if you want to be saved and on the winning side, put your trust in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
So you know the gospel now. You know the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection. You know you're a sinner. You know you can't go to heaven without getting that blood applied to your soul. And you know that Jesus Christ died on the cross, shedding his blood for your sins, and that he was buried and rose again the third day. And you know he paid the payment for your sin. And now it is up to you to accept the payment. If you would like to be saved, then come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe the gospel. Believe the bloody gospel. Put your trust in Jesus Christ and his shed blood to be your payment for sin. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So if you want to be saved, step out by faith and put your trust on him. How much faith do you need? Enough faith to do that. Just enough faith to step out by faith. If you got enough faith to call on the name of the Lord, then you have enough faith to be saved. And before you even say the words, you'll already have believed in your heart to salvation. But this has been a study on the bloody gospel.